Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's indeed a great pleasure to have Professor Kamakoti with us. He was alumnus of our institute, uh, you all know. And uh, we, are, uh, we are the proud uh, um, you know, colleague of uh, uh, Professor Kamakoti, and I'm we're really happy that uh, he agreed to come and uh, you know, talk about uh, education and research in emerging and disruptive technologies. And he's a world expert. And before actually I uh, request him to come here, I would like to introduce uh, him to the younger colleague. Of course, the elder ones know about him very well. Uh, Professor Kamukoti received his uh, MS and the PhD degrees in computer science and engineering from IIT Madras. That's where now he works as a director. Uh, initially, he joined there as a faculty uh, in 2001. And then, um, all, as all, all of us know, in January 2022, he became a director of that institute. Made us proud, of course. <laughs> he specializes in the area of computer architecture, information security, and uh, VLS design. He heads the microprocessor de development program and uh, information security education and awareness program at IIT Madras, funded by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. And uh, he is also a member of uh, National Security Advisory Board, very important uh, board actually for us. He is also the chairman of Artificial Intelligence Task Force, constituted by Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. And uh, at IIT Madras, he has served as a chairman of JEE and uh, Associate Dean, Industrial Consultancy and Sponsored Research Program. So he has worked in various capacities at both at the you know, national level as well as at the institute level. Uh, if we come to his academic uh, aspects, uh, uh, he has published a large number of papers, 150 publications in international, international journals and conferences, uh, guided many research scholars, PhD scholars, uh, MS is uh, scholars uh, in IIT. He has also coordinated and uh, run many programs, many projects, uh, you know, associated with the industry as well as government R&D establishments. And he also serves in the technology committees of National Stock Exchange and Reserve Bank of India. So as you can see, he's actually part of uh, very big organizations. Professor Kamakoti is also the recipient of uh, several awards. One of them is actually DRDO Academic Excellence Award, Indian Electronics and Semiconductor Association Techno Vision Award, Abdul Kalam Technology Innovation National Fellowship, ACCS Lifetime Achievement Award, IBM Faculty Award, and Vospik Industrial Research Award. There are many more actually to talk about him, but because there is not enough time, um, I would uh, humbly request him to actually uh, uh, to tell us about what he thinks about uh, education and research in emerging disruptive technologies. Thank you. Please. Thank you, sir. So, very good afternoon to all of you. I'm back home. Uh, I spent two years here, and I was instrumental in setting up a 16-node BioWolf cluster. And uh, we started a lot of parallel computing here with Haridas and other team there, uh, many of us specifically with the physics team. And then a lot more of parallel computing uh, has happened at IMSC. At one point of time, we had almost India's fastest supercomputer here. right? And uh, so some things that we started in 97, 98, the director then, Professor Ramachandran, uh, actually gave me something like 16, 18 lakhs to set up that 16 node cluster. And uh, today, what we set up in 1998, I think one single or two mobile processors can do today. So that's, just <laughs> that's how technology has uh, expanded. Uh, so what I thought today, just to tell about, uh, I'm sort of thought I'll represent IITs here. What sort of uh, uh, research and uh, uh, you know um, education that is happening in emerging technologies, what's happening in the different IITs. Specifically concentrating on two important fields, one is what we term as cyber physical systems and another is on medical technologies. So I thought uh, I'll 
try and uh, uh, tell you about that. I thought that is something which would be slightly away from mathematics or much away from mathematics, but something that is happening today at the IITs. So uh, we are today at industry 4.0. The first uh, uh, industry one was basically steam power and it moved to electricity uh, and then computer and automation and today it is completely governed by what we call as cyber physical systems. I will give you an example of a cyber physical system. So all the research that we are trying to do today are powered by the combination of these type of disruptive and emerging technologies and so come many other issues which we need to hand, handle, uh, issues that come uh, uh, from a security angle, issues that come from a health angle, it comes from a society angle and so many uh, orthogonal requirements come when we start doing such type of research and when we try to target these uh, uh, research uh, problems uh, that gives lot of exciting things and uh, slowly we are now moving even at IIT when we see some of the uh, latest projects that we have got the notion of a department is going off so it's basically now we are moving into an institute right and somebody says I am a computer scientist doesn't mean anything you should understand multiple things about multiple engineering and look at computer science in some depth and that makes uh, uh, the person relevant now. So the notion of a relevance also is changing and some uh, interesting points for uh, interesting developments that happened specifically in the last one year when COVID was hitting us here left and right So the, and specifically in the institutions, so the IITs and IIC, that's what I thought I can present here and I hope that will be interesting to all of you. Today, uh, the way things are going up, we are as a country looking at lot of application areas. We are looking at automation, we are looking at much more of uh, finer control. We are looking at lot of quality control at uh, different places including, these are some sample representations but we are looking at agriculture, fintech, logistics, healthcare, space technology and there are 27 to 29, uh, I think totally 29 verticals that are identified uh, by the Department of Science and Technology, which are areas in which there is a deep need for an internet connected system for close monitoring and also for effective deployment. And your entire industry 4.0 is going to be governed by how effectively we are going to integrate technology into all these application areas. And when we look at that, there are a lot of emerging techniques that are coming up. One is the artificial intelligence, uh, which is of course, uh, today we have a lot of success when the cost of misprediction is less, right? When the cost of misprediction is more, then there is a lot of human intervention. So artificial intelligence become an aid where for a doctor, but it can be an autonomous system for say weather prediction, because today we say it will rain and if it doesn't rain, nobody goes to court. But suppose somebody says there's cancer and there's no cancer or vice versa, then people can go to court. If the cost of misprediction is less, artificial intelligence becomes an autonomous system. But if the cost of misprediction is more, then it becomes an aid. Then we have uh, data science, of course, that's growing up in very, very, uh, you know, astronomical uh, pace. Simulation and modeling also has become extremely important. All along with this security becomes extremely important because today uh, any one, lot of people today 90% of the transactions on any normal bank is now on the digital end and so security actually becomes extremely important and then uh, uh, intelligent manufacturing, I uh, will give some very interesting examples for all these five as I pro uh, proceed in this talk and uh, from the basic building box side. Oh, okay, these are the emerging techniques. To implement these emerging techniques, we need certain basic building blocks. One of the important things that comes up is high speed internet uh, and mobility, 4G, 5G. Today we are sitting at 5G. And uh, the importance of 5G, the industry has invested now 154,000 crores in the first auction of the 5G bands, right? The 5G spectrum. So that shows how 5G is going to play an important role. And 5G is not 4G plus, it's not that you will start seeing your movies, it's not just that you will be, you will start seeing your movies uh, in a high definition TV, but it is much more than that, it's going to be, it is viewed as an economy changer and then there are multiple applications that are going to come out of that. 
then uh, there are a lot of high performance computing that's come up but this high performance computing is not the beowulf clusters type of things that we started at I, I, imsc say in 97 98 but these uh, 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 high performance computing are more driven towards edge because today when i look at an autonomous vehicle and uh, two vehicles are uh, coming closer to each other i need to make a decision of whom to stop how to stop etc so there are a lot of high performance that is also going to go on the edge of the device right and there is uh, also the internet of things the internet of things today for example mm, uh, uh, very shortly i invite all of you to iit madras just nearby uh, we have a, a complete uh, uh, sewage system uh, wherein water recycling system where the entire sewage is connected through a 26 kilometer pipe that we have put inside the campus total uh, length is 26 kilometers by gravity every sewage collects at a point and then it's pumped and then water is recycled and the recycled uh, water is used for gardening etc so we are getting back 1.5 million liters per day uh, as a recycled water the entire system today is connected by the skeda uh, skeda control which is what we call as internet of things and i can view everything through a web interface uh, how the whole plant is working i can monitor if there is a quality loss if there is a uh, uh, you know if there is some malfunction in terms of blockage etc all these things could be monitored so these these are type of systems that are going to come up in this and then uh, advanced materials and renewable energy sources are also becoming extremely important today uh, uh, I, I can give you some technology just around. I'll just introduce the Chennai ecosystem. If you go to Murugappa Polytechnic in Avadi, they have a demo system where there's a, a one, one uh, say some 300 square feet room, which is maintained at 8 degrees centigrade, uh, and it's completely by solar. So you can just move that room and put it in the farm. with the solar uh, during the day time using the solar panels an ac is run which will maintain at 8 degree centigrade but there is something called phase change materials uh, uh, which which basically stores the energy and in the night that energy is basically used again to keep it cool for the entire night time so over 24 cross 7 you are able to get an 8 degree centigrade cooling so this type of very interesting advanced materials and renewable energy is not just solar panels it has now moved more to uh, deeper part of uh, materials and chemical engineering and that is also something becomes a very big basic building block for cyber especially for agriculture applications see note the societal impact of this uh, uh, particular thing today a farmer actually produces something uh, two days that tomato will go bad so at the end of one day he becomes desperate one and a half days he will sell at whatever price uh, you know you offer so this becomes a desperate selling but if we actually offer him this type of uh, system then he can keep it for 7 days so his negotiation power increases so these are very important societal impacts then uh, we are looking at 3d 4d printing uh, there is something called 4d printing it's a 3d printing but then lot of uh, for example i'll give you an example here iit delhi with aims have developed a hand artificial hand which is 3d printed but then with your movement it can basically reconfigure itself so there is one more reconfigurable dimension that comes to that and then of course the cloud technology which you no know, today institutions can run without a single byte of storage that it, everything can on, can be on cloud and you can access things with a remote laptop or a tablet okay so these are all very important things are the basic building blocks now let me just uh, go to this now let me start with a simple example of a cyber physical system i hope many of you have used arogya setu right and uh, had i had the fortune of being uh, one of the uh, team members who developed this arogya setu uh, so this is very simple if two persons a and b have installed arogya setu and they keep the bluetooth on and a comes closer to b that will be recorded the id of a will be stored in the mobile device of b and the id of the id of the mobile device of b will be stored in the mobile device of a and if a, a test positive depending on the uh, proximity uh, b will be informed that somebody whom to whom you are close enough was has tested positive you go and test so there very simple contact tracing but very complex in terms of 
uh, implementation, but as a concept it was uh, very well done. And uh, currently it is used by more than 19.5 crore users, the largest uh, user base of any application. Now this is an example of a cyber physical system. So we have sensors which are the Bluetooth there. Then we have a local aggregator which is the mobile phone which houses the Bluetooth. And then there is a data transmission to the cloud and then there is a processing by the cloud. So this is a simple example of a uh, you know, cyber physical system. And then here when you look at this project, uh, it involves uh, Bluetooth. So, uh, so there is a communication engineering at that level, basically sensor interfaces. So sensor uh, uh, people are there. Then there are mobile application developers. Then there is a communication involved, there is an encryption, so there are cryptographers. Then there is a cloud service provider. And then uh, when A and B are close to each other, uh, will uh, so what is the proximity, what is the time? And be based on that, should I ask B to test? If I ask every B to test, then uh, the overall testing load of a center may go high. So there are, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> epidemiologists who are, virologists who are involved, who actually says that, you know, should he test or not? And then the overall thing is a lot of private data. So the whole, uh, there were lawyers who are involved to certify for privacy. So if you look at this cyber physical system itself, at least six to seven disciplines, including medical, uh, legal, etc., have to sit together to evolve this system. And so our education has to actually start, so somebody has to conceive of the system, at least he or she should know that these are the disciplines that will be involved. So the education now has to upgrade itself to uh, encompass this uh, massive uh, sort of system building. So the big picture today that uh, all the emerging technologies are looking at is what we call as this unity in diversity. So we, are, we have to look at the single window uh, uh, the interdisciplinary platform where we are looking at lot of sensors, we are looking at lot of control systems that can interface these sensors, we are looking at lot of uh, networking, we are looking at aggregators and then we are looking at lot of transmission technologies including 4G, 5G etc. And then we are looking at decision uh, cloud system and decision support systems which can be figured by AI. So this overall picture of what a system today means uh, is, uh, is, is this is the one of the interesting examples. So the education and research in emerging and disruptive technologies must actually start focusing on this platform and that is where IITs and the uh, many of the technological institutions are moving towards this type of an education platform. So the next thing uh, that has come up here is that uh, as you, if you had looked into the papers today, the, there is a need for what we term as uh, you know medical schools in technological institutes. IIC has started one, IIT Karakpur, IIT Kanpur, IIT Gohati, IIT Madras also we are planning to start one. So why are we trying to start a, a medical school inside a technological institute and what would be the difference, why should we start? And uh, So today the most disturbing fact is, I hope many of you would have visited a dentist and when you go to a dentist to keep your mouth open right, they put a stick inside, that stick is important. Okay, we start from that, right? And that's the most, uh, most you know, disturbing thing. Starting from there, if you look at the entire COVID time, we struggled, we struggled for, uh, you know, the ventilators, we struggled for oxygen dispensers, and everything was actually invented. And within a matter of say few months, we were able to come up to that level. We ha we did come out with reasonably good ventilators made in India. Uh, the other important thing is about vaccine. So vaccine was done by some of the western countries, I don't want to name, but then when the vaccine started working for them at 8 degrees centigrade, they, they completely forgot. After that they did not do any development. Now that 8 degree centigrade vaccine if you bring to India, whether it will work or not, first whether it will be effective or not, or will it become counterproductive, <laughs> right? We don't know what will happen. So India had to come out uh, with their own vaccine, right? So. So these are very interesting and very important points where both uh, academicians, uh, doctors, technologists, government, bureaucrats, everybody understood 
that we can't run the country like this, we need to do something better. And that's how uh, PM came out with this Atma Nirbhartha concept. And uh, I think this, this is all output of that. The National Digital Health Mission was introduced and uh, doctors were told that you know digital, digital technology needs to be adopted. And these, uh, many of these uh, COVID lessons, COVID did lot of bad things. Uh, lot of us, lot of us have lost lot of our friends uh, uh, in the COVID second wave. I lost, I lost 37 of my friends. Okay, still I have their uh, entry in my mobile phone. Uh, so, but all bad thing, this good thing has come that India realized where she lags and where she needs to do something more. Uh, so this is uh, what happens in this. We actually uh, through these medical schools. The type of uh, people whom we, uh, ec we, we generate are the physician scientists, right? What these physician scientists? They are the people who tie the uh, bench with the bedside and they are trying to conduct what we call as scientific uh, investigations. In the laboratory, uh, they are the people who talk about population health, health services, community engagement, all, right? And very importantly, these people are quite, uh, we need to establish lot of credibility in this field. For example, uh, we found a drug called Indometacin, which was 40 years old in the market. 2.7 million prescriptions had gone in the US in 2019 before the, uh, before the pandemic. And uh, this was actually prescribed to kidney patients in India by, uh, by one of the leading nephrologists and when some kidney patients came with COVID and he had to do a surgery and uh, the, so within a matter of four or five days he had to cure this corona and then start the surgery and he started off this was a you know anti-inflammatory drug and he started giving indomethacin as early as March 10th 2020. 2019, 2020. Okay, when the uh, just before the uh, uh, lockdown started, and it gave phenomenal results. At the end of this, randomized control trials were done on indomethacin, and it was proved that it is 98% effective when compared to other treatment protocols prescribed by ICMR. This was basically communicated to ICMR. We are yet to receive an acknowledgement. Okay. Same when we communicated to the uh, journals abroad, they rejected because they don't trust data from India. The same indomethacin as a cure for COVID, one patient they had tried and that cord appeared in nature. Right? One patient. And now, we, now last two weeks before, there was a paper which said that indomethacin is probably the only drug which can act against inflammation across every possible uh, uh, variant or delta, micron, omicron, x micron, all these things can. This is the only thing that could work against this. So what we actually started prescribing in March probably could have been a full, full fledged solution to the entire COVID problem. It would have stopped the lockdown. Nobody even listened. We did not get even an acknowledgement. This is the truth. So this is something that we need to come out, right? As a country, you know, we have done some trials. There should be some sort of this whole Western, Western, Western. We talk this. A white plumber and the next hall talks the same topic. All of them go there. That type of a feel has to get out. And that is also some very, very bad uh, experiences that we had, especially dealing with institutions like ICMR has also forced us to come out with this with full passion. So we are trying to do this. Importantly, 37% of the Nobel Prize winners are physician scientists. Right? And these are the fellows, they, today they pay a very key role in the pharma industry. 70% of the chief scientific officers are, are in the top 10 pharma companies and NIH institutes. And in the US we have 100 such programs. And all faculty appointments in many of the US schools are these physician scientists. So, this is very, very important statistics and uh, 
so they are that see physics and scientists are those fellows who actually found this cause effect relationship like sugar causes diabetes smoking causes cancer drinking spoils the liver so this cause effect analysis came and then uh, you know all the fda approvals everything are basically done by this physician scientist so india lacks these physician scientists and if we have very good physician scientists then this all this problem of this data and other things we could actually you know um, uh, throw it off and that is one of the predominant reason why we want to get this school and uh, two important things of course we can't publicly blame icmr but but that was the motivation but there are two important other things we are heavily dependent upon uh, uh, imports of medical devices because this we need to revitalize the medical device industry here and there are a lot of non communicable diseases which are very specific to india and that we would like to uh, solve here so we are very confident that this type of a school can go okay so so cyber physical systems and uh, medical technology are two important areas which many of the iits today have started looking into and there are a lot of very interesting uh, uh, education and research initiatives i'll give a quick sample of them in the remaining uh, time that i have so the first thing is today we are looking at 3d printing so in an engineering curriculum in the first year we do all this lathe and other things which are no sort of uh, you know uh, uh, old old technologies but today 3d modeling 3d printing iit bilai had introduced this is a sample we start studying 3d printing at a very early stage so today 3d printed heart 3d printed kidney 3d printed lungs 3d printing in membranes those things are coming up in a very big way and almost we have btech mtech and phd in data science ai mechatronics electric vehicles electric vehicle tech there is a specific mtech in electric vehicle technology alone so these are some of the very interesting courses that have come up which has a very nice technological which has a blend between technological uh, uh, basic ground technology and the industrial needs and iit madras per se we have introduced now uh, nine but uh, recently one more nine interdisciplinary postgraduate program where for each of these program there are at least five to six departments that are participating we start with ad advanced materials biomedical engineering uh, data science robotics quantum science we have one more on quantitative finance which is also very important nowadays so and then there are uh, unique interdisciplinary mtech programs which are unheard of before like uh, additive manufacturing there is a mtech program in climate change S sustainability actually becomes a very important thing there are 17 sustainable development goals of the united nation and we need to align ourselves to these type of sustainable development goals and there are a lot of uh, programs that go with e waste management climate change etc and there is also a very good blend of management science and uh, data science and management for example iim indore and iit indore have got in a very comprehensive program on uh, data science and management and then um, <coughs> uh, there are joint phd's in medical technology for example uh, iit jodhpur and aims jodhpur they have started working on a joint masters and phd in technology medical technology and uh, there's an mtech in clinical engineering uh, between iit madras sri chitra trinal institute of medical sciences a very very uh, uh, very uh, prominent uh, medical technology institute medical research institute in trivandrum and of course cmc in vellore and uh, there are other interesting courses like brain science digital humanities today humanities there are a lot of things that we are digitized that are available as uh, uh, in digital technology for example digital memory who remembers for you is it your email or your brain so these type of very interesting questions come here and there are very interesting programs that are happen iit madras we have introduced this uh, again lot of people uh, from math science cmi they are also instructors in this course uh, we have introduced this bsc data science and programming as a part of the national education policy uh, we need to make our institute accessible to all right um, if you look at the je uh, there are 15 lakh people who write je 
mains and advanced and then we select some 15,000 of them. So 14,85,000 we need to have some answer for them. We have opened this course. This course is uh, no age gap, uh, age bar. So you can join at any age. So the age is uh, between 17 and 74 to, as of today. So there is a kid at 17, there is a kid at 74. And then we also have a 81 year old person who failed now. The qualifier is interacting with me, he wants to pass and join. So, <laughs> so we will touch 80, post 80 also. And then um, we are also getting interesting combination like father, son, uh, uh, mother, daughter, mother, son, mother, father. Father, son, very interesting. Son gets more mark than the father. So this is also happening. Interestingly, last week I found that mother-in-law, daughter-in-law also has happened. So, <laughs> so, so this no and we have we formed some groups. There is a guy in, uh, 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 working as an uh, engineer in uh, Air India, uh, interacting with a 17-year-old kid, basically telling how data science will be used for engine maintenance. So this type of a very cross connect happens here. We have commerce graduates as a part of this. So we have people from multiple disciplines who are part of this course. And importantly, uh, the U University Grants Commission has committed a very historic order that is saying that you can do two courses at the same time, provided the timetable do not clash. So, the, so by this, a uh, lot more of people are joining. So we have around 11,346 students on campus physical. Overnight, uh, through this, we have now admitted 13,000 students in the program. So we doubled it. And today, large universities have some 40,000 students. I am sure within a few years, IIT Madras will have 50,000 students because we will we'll like to have some 35K uh, through online mode and uh, 15K through uh, our regular BTEC programs. This is also a regular program, so we have, we have introduced it as a four-year BS program. And this is a change in education that we also need. Uh, we are also tying up with industry, there is a great demand for these people. Uh, the entry is very easy because we do not have a cap on number of seats, we do not have this stupid uh, 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 you know, entrance exam, rank, all these things go. They have to just basically get a qualifier, then they get into the course. So entry is easy, exit is very tough. So they really go through a rigor uh, and finally uh, we have very strong industry collaboration. And I hope this program will be successful. We reach to, uh, you know, lakhs of students. Uh, this is also something which every IIT is now aspiring to go in. Now, on the research side, these are very interesting things. So, there is a, on the quantum communication side and post-quantum cryptography and, uh, you know, um, uh, there are a lot of efforts that are happening at both IITs, IISC. For example, IIT Delhi, uh, successfully uh, tested this quantum key distribution between two cities which are 100 kilometers apart uh, with repeaters etc. Then there are a lot of work happening on quantum device development, IIT Goa has, uh, Goa has uh, some EMS integrated 2D photonic devices. So ultimately hardware is very important. Today uh, uh, the way our country has lost in the semiconductor technology is uh, for TVS50 which is the bins of the poor, right? We don't find chips for its electronic control unit, right? You have to wait for two months for TVS50. So that's a state we have landed up because of this semiconductor. So there are a lot of efforts. Now we are waking up, maybe very late, but at least now we have woken up. So that's another important thing. And then lot of medical things have happened. This is one very interesting example, what you see on the left hand side. IIT Delhi has, uh, uh, developed a technology where we can detect dengue virus and the HIV within one hour. Dengue is very important. See, dengue, you give the test, three days later you find it's dengue. By that, many things happen to your body. <laughs> okay. So, if you actually could find out within one hour, then that's a great deal here. And they have uh, tested it very nicely. And similarly, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is one very interesting thing. Uh, on the mm, uh, first ever point of care devices, a patented technology which... Uh, detects, uh, you know, uh, this uh, uh, what you call as bacteremia in neonatal sepsis. So this again, uh, this can do it within 10 minutes, which was actually taking hours or probably days. Uh, this is for, uh, you know, newborns also. The sample can uh, uh, give you very good result in 10 minutes. And Ayur tech, Ayush, our medicines, uh, so uh, immunity wise, Ayurveda has proved to be very good for people who have been practicing. I have been visiting my institute from August 2020 
till date and I have been using a small nose, uh, nose drop which was given by Ayurvedic person and till now COVID did not touch me. Okay, and there are a lot of other people who are in close proximity for whom COVID has come. So, I think Ayurveda is certainly giving immunity, but again, we don't have a scientific basis. So, Ayurtech is uh, becoming very important. So, IIT Madras, we are starting a big effort. As a first step, we have uh, a Incops pharmacy inside, uh, and I see a lot of crowd there now. And I uh, and IIT Jodhpur also has started something on Ayurtech. Okay, so this is also very important. Uh, this is very interesting from IIT Bombay. Uh, they are actually trying to, uh, they have licensed it and uh, they have uh, raised around 9 million USD for this. Uh, so this is what you call as CAR T therapy for cancer. Uh, India actually ranks second uh, in global cancer mort uh, mortality. Uh, so the cost of CAR T therapy is approximately rupees 5 crore per patient. And what this device is doing is it is reducing into 10 to 15 lakhs per patient. And when it becomes a lot more, uh, you know, um, 10 to 15 lakhs is something which an insurance cover, insurance can cover. 5 crore is very uh, difficult. Uh, and uh, uh, if it scales, this will become very, very affordable platform. So this is something uh, very interesting and uh, uh, they are very close to perfection. Uh, so this is some uh, very good. And uh, these are all some things that came up during the pandemic, the low cost ventilator by IIT Hyderabad and uh, this is this uh, antiviral fabric uh, which uh, actually removes 99.9% .9 viruses within 30 minutes. Uh, so they have now started large scale manufacturing, this is from IIT Delhi and then lot of smart healthcare from IIT, uh, IIC, uh, many things that have come smaller devices. This is when, uh, when we keep uh, putting the ventilator, then there is a problem of pneumonia and then, uh, so this is, uh, this device from IIT Kan uh, Kanpur is basically a portable uh, uh, thing that can go with the I ICUs and we can remove the pneumonia very effectively. Uh, then there were a lot of uh, drug di discoveries that had happened. Uh, for example, IIT Mandi had uh, found a new molecule called PK2 which can uh, reduce diabetes and uh, the insulin is very costly and also we don't know the after effects of insulin, it's a lifelong commitment with ins insulin but uh, this uh, they believe that they are trying to commercialize it, trying to bring it to the drugs and uh, this can be a very cost effective treatment for diabetes which is quite common in many of us and uh, they also have this I remember uh, you know Lord Haduman bringing Sanjeevani from a Himalayas to save Lakshmana. So like that Himalayan flower petals, they have shown that it has a very good uh, inhibition to SARS-CoV-2 infection. Uh, and then lot of this anti-cancer drugs through genome sequencing or, uh, and polymers, uh, sequencing of polymers, this is happening at IIT Palakkad. So many institutes have started uh, involving themselves in this type of drug discovery. The next important thing that uh, came up here is this assistive devices, right? Uh, so the IIT Darwad has this 4D printed exoskeleton hand uh, and uh, a gripper mechanism. Uh, we have this Neobolt which is a, a motorized wheelchair. Then the artificial feet. These things are now in market. Uh, these are some things which will change the life. For example, we had this standing chair. Uh, uh, so the, there are patients who have never stood up in life and we gave this uh, standing chair during a uh, event and when uh, national anthem was played they all pressed it and got up okay it's very touching very sad. so these are things that will touch lives and uh, some of very interesting things are happening in this direction uh, iit kanpur has a very interesting uh, program now um, called hirdyantra which is uh, basically to create an artificial heart and there are lot of 3d printing on membranes etc will come up uh, this is something very interesting and very futuristic. So actually when um, Kennedy said that we will put the man on the moon, uh, uh, Cooley actually told out of these uh, that the next import equal challenge would be to develop a artificial organ, right, heart. We successfully put the man on the moon because it's only engineering was necessary for that. But you know we couldn't get an artificial heart, till now you know there were hearts that came then it went off uh, you know standard wise it was good bad good bad it was like a sine wave and still it continues 
The reason is that this technology and medicine has not come together. And that is where, we know, the next 25 years, by 2047, when India celebrates her 100th independence, we need to get that in place and that is what we are doing. The next interesting thing or very important thing is uh, for the farmers, uh, we need to do a lot of things. So, uh, so many, many efforts are happening. Uh, we are looking at what you call as precision agriculture that goes from the uh, monitoring of the soil pre, uh, you know, harvesting at the time of growth and post harvesting and do a lot of data analytics for that, come, uh, device protocols, uh, you know, uh, based on which we maintain the soil, etc. And uh, so, the IIT Darwad has a very nice framework for this. Uh, in IIT Madras, we are looking at what you call as this regenerative agriculture stack architecture, RASA. RASA has a Sanskrit means essence. And we are basically looking at uh, technological interventions for a farm to kitchen type of uh, thing. And we are trying to get a lot more sensor interventions and digital twins to do this. Uh, so that involves uh, the type of research I told, type of products like you put storage on the field without electricity, etc. So many things can come up. So there are very interesting things that are happening uh, both at Rasa and also in the IIT, uh, IIT Dharwad one. And uh, IIT Roper has uh, agriculture and water dec technology development hub called AVAD and uh, under uh, NMICP. This is a national mission on cyber physical systems and uh, they have done a lot of automation based on IoT, harvesting and post harvesting and irrigation. So one of the most interesting case studies of 5G as the technology is going to roll out, is going to be uh, through uh, through agriculture. Because a lot of agriculture needs are there. And in this direction, I, I must also tell you that uh, after 35 years, in the last 35 years since uh, uh, I was involved in technology, or I started understanding engineering, we have never seen one standard going from India to the mobile. First time, uh, the government also realized its importance, put their foot down, to get our technology into the uh, international standards. So 3GPP has one Indian standard inside. It's never happened. So it's a cartel of many fellows. And what that technology does is, uh, today if I have, uh, this is a base station, uh, my distance would be say uh, X. Uh, the same base station now will give me 2X, right? So the coverage is increased by twice. By that what happens, the number of hardware and the EVS that I am going to put here, the carbon footprint because I am having thousands of such, if I, convert, if I, if I say epsilon here means I am saving overall thousand epsilon. This is small drops make a ocean, right? That is a real uh, example of that statement, small drops make a ocean. Now this can increase by 2x, means areas which I cannot access farmlands where I don't have conventional power, I can put at a point where there is a conventional power and I can have an e extended range. So this is called 5GI, 5G India. Uh, we, uh, so there was a lot of reluctance from Europe and America. So we all always talk about China, but uh, there are a lot of uh, reluctance from Europe and America on this uh, inclusion of this. So we said we will go with our own standard. And then finally they said, okay, we will harmonize and now we have that our standard also included. So 5GI becomes mandatory. So there's a big contribution from our country in the last uh, seven to eight months. Uh, now uh, we also have uh, both at IIT Madras and IIT Hyderabad. Now we have this, we call a rocket factory. I invite all of you to c come over to the IIT Madras research park to have a view of our rocket factory. Uh, we print the entire rocket uh, uh, from end to end, okay, including the engines. Uh, etc. Uh, uh, so, um, we also have lot of indigenous uh, metallic printing and additive manufacturing devices have come up. So, these are all basic building blocks. And uh, one thing is to 3D print a metal, we can also 3D print a membrane as we need for artificial organs etc. There is a very good effort that is going on at, uh, going on at IIT Indo where we can print uh, uh, so on very thin films, right? So, uh, so this is one thing. And lot of uh, things on building automation, what you see on the right hand side is a completely 3D printed house. So, you give basically the diagram with the, you know, the, the AutoCAD uh, 
diagram to the printer and it will beautifully print with all the designs and uh, very nice architectures you can bring. This is one 3D printed house. Uh, so we believe that houses can be printed much faster. Uh, normally, uh, you know, uh, to build something, we know how much we struggle with all our GFR rules and CPWD and all these things. So these things can become a good solution for us. And a lot of uh, uh, building automation. So here is uh, IIT Indoor's. Uh, again, IIT Indoor has been doing quite significantly well on many of this. Uh, if you see, there is a, uh, uh, you know, uh, you have, you have curtain-like thing which will uh, which will actually uh, absorb a lot of IR and heat and uh, so this will this has a potential application in power saving specifically in air conditioning and also in vehicles so this is a polymer that they have uh, devised now coming to the last one today uh, this is uh, last but one space technology space is now commercialized the country has commercialized space all of you may know there is an organization called InSpace, which is a commercial wing of space. Now, uh, when we go from 5G to 6G, we, we, 5G is almost everything is terrestrial, like all your data communications, your, your base stations and all the backhaul networks are all in the ground. But when you go to the uh, 6G, it is going to be both satellite and uh, uh, terrestrial. And if you are looking at satellite, uh, there is a need for uh, 1 lakh 20 thousand satellites to be on the low earth orbit which is 350 kilometers and these 1 lakh 20 thousand satellites will have a uh, age of around only uh, 5 years so every 5 years have to keep resending these satellites and if you look at 1 lakh 20 thousand for 5 years then uh, you can already see that we are looking at something like 25 thousand per year and 25 thousand uh, divided by uh, say 200 working days essentially means that we are talking about 100 satellites a day right so so uh, so that means at least one satellite or one or two satellites per country per day right? this is this is something we need to do and uh, if you look at that uh, uh, we need to have something called rapid launch facilities today we are sending one satellite per say one quad 115 days or something it cannot happen right so what is a rapid launch facility? So it is like, you know, you want to conduct a marriage. You go, you go to a chatram uh, on chal tree or whatever marriage all, conduct, you go, next fellow comes and conducts and go. Something like that, this is, should happen. So what we are looking at, and if everything goes fine, uh, within Diwali we'll, or very close to Diwali, we'll launch our first rocket. Uh, uh, so it'll be like three trucks. Uh, one truck will be a launch pad like this. Another truck will be the power source, another, another truck will be the control room. These three trucks will go to a barren land, uh, designated permitted land. And uh, they will go station there, press a button, go up, rocket will go. All the three trucks will move, the next three trucks will come. Okay, so this is one technology we are trying to specialize and that's what is happening in our rocket factory. Uh, hopefully by the end of this year, I hope, I pray, plead to God that it should be successful. That will make India to the top. Next important thing is, if we want to send such type of rockets, we need to make those engines, right? So what we have specialized now is that we are 3D printing the engines. And in 72 hours, with a normal 3D printer uh, of some 350 uh, uh, mm diameter, that's a, that's a specification for it, doesn't come immediately to my mind, we can print four engines. And a normal engine which is not 3D printed has 3000 soldering points. This doesn't have a single soldering point. So essentially the uh, chance of failure or detachment is much, much, much lesser. And uh, this is what is happening in our rocket factory. You can actually go and see uh, a, a engine getting 3D printed from scratch, right, using some Ecole metal and stuff like that. So this is something which is very, very important and I am sure uh, we have a, a very exciting startup called Agnikun uh, who is uh, doing that and by December uh, hopefully I can share the great news that we have put, we have successfully do, done a sub-orbital uh, flight. It's a parabolic flight which will take the rocket till the edge of the gravity and then it will fall down just till and then we have to test many parameters and once that sub-orbital sub flight is successful, 
then we can send flights to LEO. Suborbital things should happen by this year and for sure. The last uh, is about mining. Uh, this is also done very extensively. This is very important for mining, not precious metals, our uh, oil, coal, etc. So there are a lot of things that are happening on mining automation, specifically what they call as pit to port optimization. Uh, and uh, this is something uh, which is of great importance not to only to us but for all the African countries also. So, so this, uh, this has a very big global market and this can be a very good guidance for improving uh, mining operations specifically from an automation perspective and also people stuck in the main, how do they come back? Right? So there's a lot of health issues and dangers that happen uh, in mining and uh, that's a comprehensive uh, stack that looks at uh, trying to reduce those type of things and also trying to use more of autonomous systems which can do the mining and uh, ensure that lot of safety is uh, in place. Uh, last is uh, of course I talked about the 5G communications uh, and there are a lot the end to end systems so the IIT Madras has the 5G test bed today which uh, we have established the first Atmanirbhar 5G calls except for the chips that unfortunately we have to import. Uh, everything else was done, the board, PCB board was done here, assembled here, software written here, the enclosures were done, designed uh, for multiple, uh, you know, EMC compliance, etc. Then uh, the entire phone call from one phone to another phone through 5G was established and we have demonstrated this. So uh, this is a multi-institutional effort led by IIT Madras and uh, uh, IIT Bombay, Kanpur, Delhi, some IIT Hyderabad, IISC, some all of them contributed to this. And there are a lot of uh, work on uh, the spectrum sensing things that are happening. So on the communication side, uh, we have a very strong group, world class group that is there. Uh, so the other interesting project is on transportation. Uh, today, uh, can I go from here to Bangalore in 35 minutes? The answer is yes, uh, because uh, with the Hyperloop, which actually uh, you know Elon Musk started, but we have a very strong group uh, on the Hyperloop, we have around 78, 74 students who are working on the Hyperloop project and they have also made a startup here. Within the next 8 months, uh, we have a discovery campus which is 25 kilometers away in Tayu near Kalambakam here and we will be demonstrating a 550 meters track, uh, half a kilometer track inside the campus uh, in which you send a train, blast it at 500 kilometers per hour. Right? So, so once this is ready, we will be, uh, so uh, Tesla had one such facility, they have closed it for public. So we will be the only facility in the world which has such a uh, 550 meter track. And so we intend to run an international competition just to showcase that, you know, we existed. And I'm sure this is going to be, uh, we are already in discussion with cargo. Instead of sending humans, we can send cargo and that's a very interesting thing that we can do with this. And then a uh, lot of uh, things for the uh, strategic sector, specifically on the high altitude stuff uh, mm, uh, and uh, many, many things on the digital twins. Today, uh, there is an increasing need. For example, when the vaccine came, uh, people with this, 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 if they get vaccinated, we don't know what will happen. Like, I, I think with 0.1 probability, you may die now. Who will go and put the vaccine, right? So these type of questions came up. So can we have a digital twin to whom we inject a vaccine and then see a long term effect of this. We don't know what would be, I have put Covaxin, many of you have put Covishield, we don't know what will happen one year, two year later. There are people say there is clotting coming uh, and we don't know, a lot of, lot of, lot of different things are happened. It's an unknown terrain where uh, we got ourselves exposed to. So can we have this digital twins which can basically replicate a patient where we can accelerate the life of the digital twin to find out if there could be some thing. So these are some adverse effect of a medicine. Can I have personalized medicine? Can I have a digital twin which will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, mimicking a machine so that I can stress that machine without breaking the machine, I can stress and see how it works. So a lot of things are coming up. And virtual reality and augmented reality also is catching up because today we are looking at immersive skill training. So if you come to IIT, there is a, a there's a demonstration of how you do car painting, right, for example. 
right? You can do the complete car painting using virtual reality. You need not give a car to them. And let us slowly, once they, uh, and the entire skill is captured there, how skilled they have become. Finally, you can take them to the uh, workshop and ask them to paint a real car. Uh, so that learning curve is very steep and they are able to pick up very fast. So there's a very good uh, uh, virtual and augmented re reality intervention into the area of immersive skill uh, training and uh, a lot of tourism and medical applications are there. Uh, <coughs> so the last is uh, a lot of work on cyber security, specifically on the blockchain technologies. Uh, because today everything is digitized. Uh, some very interesting things are uh, a tamper-proof, globally verifiable academic degrees floated by IIT Kanpur today. The national education policy talks about academic bank of credits. You do two courses at Math Science and three courses at IMS, uh, IIT and one course at CMI, you get a BSc degree. Right? So you could have what you call as academic bank of credits. So you can co collect credits and then get a degree. So for that, you know, there should be some verifiability and things. So this comes up very nicely. The entire land records management IIT Kanpur has done in Karnataka today. And a uh, lot of IoT based systems, uh, one I mentioned in IIT Madras, a lot of things on pipe uh, monitoring, especially long range gas pipes uh, and uh, landslide monitoring. Now IIT Mandi system predicted that there will be a landslide two days in advance and the landslide did happen. Okay, so. So these type of very nice interventions have come up here. And waste to wealth is also becoming quite important. Uh, many many people have seen the Ghazipur uh, thing near uh, Delhi, right? Uh, one, one big mountain of garbage, okay? Right? So, so how do we convert that to wealth? Yes, there is a lot of wealth in waste because you can make bio, bio manure and also we can basically uh, do fly ash which can be a substitute for uh, sand and uh, it can, uh, so there are a lot of use of this and uh, Madras, Mandi and Patna are three IITs which are looking on this. Battery again, today we are talking about EV, 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 finally lithium ion is with our friend country, so he will not give this, okay, so it's going to become more and more costly. So we are looking at things that are available in India, for example, zinc is available in India, so can we look at zinc based batteries? and lithium ion, little less lithium ion but other chemical components and most importantly can I do a range extension and also cost reduction. So these are some things which we have to look. If India has to go to EV then there is a imminent need for us to look at these type of battery technologies. And uh, so this is also a lithium ion uh, battery technology by IIT Bombay uh, which is uh, actually uh, this is very much resistant to fire. Okay, so a uh, lot of today you see some cars getting burnt, uh, scooters getting burnt, but this is uh, something close. So just I thought uh, I'll take this opportunity to brief all of you on many of these technologies that are happening uh, that can make India Atmanirbhar. Uh, Gandhiji and the team got social and political independence in 1947. By 2047, we must get technological independence. If we don't do it, then we don't have anything, nothing to tell. So, uh, so this statement, actually when I was an ordinary professor, nobody was listening, now at least as director, somebody is listening to me. But as well, uh, NIR Foreign Institute, I thought it was my duty to come and tell as much as possible about all the IITs today. And uh, we hope a uh, lot of things we can do together. Uh, and we have been doing together. So, and uh, let us all work and make India a supreme technology power by 2047. Thank you very much. <laughs>
okay and uh, uh, so the entire structure everything we are patenting it uh-huh. there are some very interesting things that come up uh, so we are a very strong finite element analysis group mm-hmm. right uh, so these fellows are able to do a digital twin very quickly and study different aspects of this and we come out with very intricate designs here and every intricate design we go and patent it now that's one thing that we have listened so from the since he has opened up this topic i think madras this year we have uh, filed around 245 patents and uh, 170 of them were granted of the previous years and we had nil rejection the reason is today we have an ai based tool suppose you enter your idea into that uh, it basically searches the entire database across the world and give you all the competing patents and also give you the novelty of the type, this idea how it compares with whatever has done and also gives you a total addressable market if you really want to commercialize it so all these things are done by an ai tool mm-hmm. which is an atmanirbhar chandigarh based startup tool okay which is actually in uh, uh, used extensively in japan and other countries unfortunately india didn't become popular and uh, we are popularizing it i have uh, got some finder licenses and all my btech project mtech project we are saying go through that tool and if that works you know you get an idea right in yeah. the moment you get an idea so my uh, vision for iit madras is patch patent a day scheme so if it is 365 patents and leap year we need 366 okay <laughs> congratulations <laughs> questions Ah yes there is an hydrogen fuel program iit madras and uh, uh, there's one more agency which is looking at it um, industry also and ta- i think tatas uh, i'll get you the details uh, uh, if you can share the emails yes there is an hydrogen fuel program but they still say that it is much much far away from commercialization because of inflammability and uh, and the range Uh, that's what they uh, many of these researchers are telling right um, so fuel cell as a concept itself should uh, succeed and um, this is this is the real remark we get uh, for example they say you can't just take the car for today with uh, with the mg uh, uh, with uh, mg is uh, electric vehicle 900 kilometers in one day we actually covered with that stress that's what it very comfortable nothing happened and uh, that uh, similar things were done with tata nexon so this type of a test you know you can't get that confidence in hydrogen that's what they say as of today so that's the stage from a user perspective from a technology perspective i'll certainly get that team if you're interested i can put you in touch with them questions I visited couple of uh, 3D printing labs it was yes. very interesting yes. impressive what they produce but the machines are very expensive so are there efforts to make yeah, the machines yeah. of course thank you sir the, we are now doing except for one laser everything else is done by amaze one company in bangalore and he has brought it down very very cheap right so today we are also working so suppose math science need a 3D printer Uh, uh we say that you come and install the 3d printer you operate it we'll pay you monthly rent and we will rent it out to all our startups right so we at a very low price and uh, he's agreeable uh, but now for both the 3d printing house and the rocket factory these 3d printers are configured by these guys except for a few components everything was done in there and it's printing well uh, so the rocket engine is made so <laughs> no no doubt about that it's printing well Right. and uh, yeah, it, we are we are making it except for on i'll put you in touch with amaze is amazing actually <laughs> you can go to banargata road in bangalore uh, absolutely very done, very well done and uh, it, it's uh, we are auto parts are being made and exported to bens now you know the type of things they 1 uh, mm or say 1 micrometer they will reject the piece that is done very accurately and uh, you can see many of those things are uh, being uh, done at iit madras uh, many companies there are many d- small companies which we don't know who are doing lot of exports right especially auto parts is done perfect you can see the uh, 3d printed house that printer was done by him from scratch right these guys 
so right so the answer is positive right so, and that's very important today we believe the entire space technology will be revolutionized by 3d printing and only 3d printing that we strongly believe okay and that is where iit madras is betting huh? ah ah yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yes, how, yes. How far do you think we are from building quantum computers, given that you were here when supercomputers? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'd like to do a, a, after my directorship, I want to come to math science as a <laughs> faculty and do a quick idea. So, interestingly, this morning we demonstrated, IIT Delhi demonstrated a quantum key distribution communication channel. Uh, we morning we also demonstrated a QKD between uh, IIT Madras campus research park and sets uh, organization just mixed. So in the area of communication we are very clear. So there are devices which can do the quantum key generation uh, encrypted, use the normal fiber. So this is out of hybrid computing where you use classical uh, uh, networks but we use quantum encryption etc. And that's why China is today leading very much. So China can do across multiple cities. Uh, kilometers apart and they are also quantum devices that, uh, in that uh, satellite but everything is basically quantum cryptography in terms of key generation and that essentially means your decryption becomes extremely difficult right so that's the thing so I am increasing the mathematical strength of my encryption so that my decryption with lot more uh, uh, thing we can't happen so this is one thing which is practical which is happening today and which will become so tomorrow yeah, very, uh, say, some Prime Minister of one nation talking to another Prime Minister can happen safely. They can talk about some very big secrets with the quantum encryption then, safely. That thought of an assurance will come in, say, two, three months, two, three years, where, you know, we can have these video conferencing systems. Making a quantum computer per se, interestingly, I had a, a delegation from Finland who says they have the complete technology, you can make a 64 qubit quantum computing system. So again, that needs funding. Everything needs Lakshmi, right? So that's <laughs> the most important thing. So we have to look at that. And if that works, then probably. So uh, IBM has its quantum computer. And again, they have given open it up free. That free comes with no free lunch, right? All our techniques, algorithms, they will also survey. So we go and log in and put our algorithms. They know what it means, right? So that is one thing. So beyond some point, we can't use such, such type of system. So there's an imminent need for India to build its own quantum computing system. Uh, Finland now says that they can come here, collaborate, they'll build it here and go without internet connection. So we know that it's going to be with us and for us. So, so that's where we stand. Uh, probably in another uh, India uh, a country where DST is coming out with a quantum mission. Uh, they have put some 8,000 crores on that. Uh, let us see what's going to happen as a part of this. So this is my broad, uh, I know I only partially answered. Positive thing is communication today, at least cryptography is happening. Yeah. You had a question? Yeah. What is your view on basic science research in India and how, you know, uh, in that area we can really... Yeah, see, many of these things have a basis on basic sciences. For example, today, uh, uh, the entire semiconductor electronics goes with uh, basic device physics and metallurgy, right? If you could call that as basic science, and um, and a uh, lot of the medical stuff as again uh, relates upon basic sciences, right? So, a uh, lot of medical research is happening. Wearables are basically taking up their importance from basic sciences. So, uh, down the line, uh, I strongly believe, and even. Uh, even the 3D printing of rockets, right, again, the entire stress strain, everything starts from, uh, you know, uh, basic physics and then become applied physics and goes by. So, uh, if you really want to make those devices, right, I can be a user of the device. So, somebody asks, what is the difference between MCA, Master of Computer Application and BE Computer Science, right? Computer Science is a basic science. MCA is an application of this science, applied science, right? So, this is a difference. So, certainly if I want to actually generate that device, right, today, um, very uh, disheartening thing is, today take a, we just took a washing machine, completely dissected it, <coughs> and found out if every device in the, every board inside that, can it be done in India. So, I close all the ports, all the custom office, 
can i from scratch build a washing machine in the country it's not possible because ultimately some tooling some manufacturing this is all not available but if i want to make an uh, device that will do this tooling right i need to start with basic physics basic mathematics right so so these are very important thing and today drug discovery essentially depends upon basic biology anatomy etc so i think there the, the, this is a very good uh, confluence of uh, basic science and uh, applied uh, technology which is going to provide the next generation devices right so that's where this is going to grow so i i'm sure that basic sciences will have a great future uh, icers are growing very much imsc is going so we are working on basic sciences Right. We'll have the last question in the yeah, sure. time. Uh, so you had mentioned about the dental materials, but uh, even with so much of things, still we are relying more on imports. In uh, that which on dental. dental. We are relying. I didn't say we are. The whole uh, exercise of this whole uh, physician scientist health is important. Yeah. Why are we living? Why are we earning? Why are we coming to office today to earn some money to fill up the six inch stomach and keep well, be happy? No. health is very important and for health if we are going to be dependent upon a foreign nation we have got today everything is important every damn thing is important and every medicine no indian medicine is allowed to come up above. so that is a very big lobby and the lobby is uh, you know completely penetrated into the essential structure of our country so <laughs> that's why we need to break it and that's a big effort so we we are importing and we need to get out of it consciously and uh, so that is where this medical science will lead us to so the initial set of equipments that we want to buy again we have to import but then there we start and see how do we do this engineering and how do we come out with this we may pay the patent but at least make it in india made in india so these are some things which we have to very carefully look out next 25 years we don't don't do it 2047 none of our grandchildren will say i think we'll get all the grandchildren right so nobody will say oh stupid grandfather stupid grandmother that's what they'll say okay never <laughs> be a tranquil so that's what we are thank you very much i think there are many many more questions uh, but uh, before we end i request our director and registrar to kindly felicitate professor kamakoti